Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Stocks Will Show Market Review of the SPY. There was a minutes out today at 2 o'clock, so I thought I'd review this. The, the market's going to close bullishly today. I did think that that would play out that way this morning when I knew the minutes were going to happen. I said there's one of two things that's going to take place in the minutes today when I was reading this chart before and it even happened, before the open, I said it. And then it just was confirmed into the day's trading. I said that the market is either going to do one of two things after the minutes, either rally over the high, continue crazy like over the high, or come down, do a bottoming tail into the minutes and still close bullishly on the day. And I said the tail could actually be big. As it turns out, the tail wasn't even big. Tail was not even large that it made. Um, fl flashed down quickly then in the minutes and then rallied up and we're closing bullishly today with a nice bottoming tail. The fact that the body is red uh, is not that significant here today. So the first reaction was up, then down. Never broke the low, the low the market had set in the morning, even when it broke down in here, and then it held in here very quickly. And we actually could still even close with green. It's going to be very, very tight. Market closes in like 16 minutes here, 15 or so. The market's holding very bullishly, and I, I know that everyone thinks this is we're coming in, but it, we're honestly really not going to. I just don't see that even happening at all, actually. And it could have happened, but and if it had, we'd still be bullish. But and if we had, we still wouldn't have crashed, which we're not going to do. The market is not going to crash. The market is higher. The everything that's happened here and transpired is lifting the market. It's new money coming to the market, and that means new buying. And that means if it's new buying, it's institutional money or power money buying the market up, and it's not going to take an immediate exit once it just took an entry. So that's really the correct way to look at this positioning. I did a swing trade letter on this. The second letter was on the SPY, and it was a good call. Uh, it was already gotten to the target. And the market is tough here for traders to know what to do with if they don't know how to read gaps. I've been saying this all along, though, and I can't fault anyone for finding this difficult to buy because if you don't know how to read gaps, you think you're buying something here that's extended. But it's actually not. This is actually the perfect place to be buying and an imperfect place to be shorting. And what day traders and core traders and swing traders are trying to do is short this market. They think it's extended. I think it's a failed breakout. I think it's going to come in. I think it's due for correction. I think the market's going to crash. And they think it needs, needs a reversal. But it's just not going to play out that way. And it's making it tough for people. Unless you have a specific day trading strategy or swing trading strategy that you do every day where you don't need to rely on the market, you're probably getting chopped up. So I'm really happy that I know how to trade, number one, and know how to trade gaps, number two, which work on their own regardless of the market direction. Now, that's not to say that if the market is power trending down and I'm in a shorter power trending up, if I'm in a long, that the market wouldn't help lift that stock to the dream target in either direction. But really, quality golden gaps should work on their own, go to the target, regardless of what the market is doing. And I'm talking regular targets. I'm not talking about dream targets here right now, all right? Now, the target for the SPY is two, 208 is the next target, then 212. 210, 212 is realistic for the end of the calendar year, and we are not that far from that. The thing is that people that want to go long but didn't, or were long and already got out, are looking for a full-on pullback, something like this, deeper, same, or more so like this, to go long. I don't think it's going to set up that way, okay? So even people that see this market as higher that are want to go long feel they can't go long here and they're going to miss it. They're waiting for a pullback to support to buy. That's not the way that I take entries in stocks. Long, okay. Anyways, so I don't think it's going to set up that way. For the people that even know the market's higher, I don't think it's going to set up that way. I'm pretty sure it's not. I'm reading all this trading action here. It's actually just doing it each day that it's doing whatever it's doing here when it's trading. This has happened today. And that's what's making it tough. The actual market is so strong that it's not even going to come down that way to set up as a pull into support, nor does it have to do that. Why? Because of the gaps. And the trading action on the day combined with the gaps the price action read on the day combined with the gaps is what's telling me that actually this is not extended, is definitively higher, and it's not doing anything wrong. And actually what I thought the market would do today in the minutes turned out to be true. And, you know, this looks like the market's going to follow through higher tomorrow. Again, very challenging for traders to buy in here. 
intraday, I get that, but if you wanted me long overnight, you already could be long the market and stay with it. Now, there's also people that don't think the market's higher, and those people want to short this market. They are not going to give it up. They have not given it up. They tried to come in today. The market was red today at one point in the morning. Uh, I don't think they're giving it up at all this year. I think the market, every time it continues to make a new high, the shorts will come in and attempt to short the market. You see how every attempt that's being made to do that is failing, though, and continuing to push the market higher anyways. I don't think the shorts are going to get up on shorting this bullish market until somewhere into 2015. I don't know when, and I won't till I see it. But, you know, the shorts are going to keep trying to come in that think the market's going to crash and fall, and they don't want to miss the moves, so they keep grabbing it. So there's a difference between predicting what something's going to do and actually waiting, seeing it set up, and then just doing it. So you can predict what something's going to do, which is what I do. And then when it, you see it set up, that way you predict you do it. Like I did that today with the trade that I took in the morning. I said, this is exactly what this needs to do, and if it doesn't, I'm going to take it. And I actually know what things are supposed to do. And this market did what I thought it was supposed to do today, actually. So, like, if I had wanted to go long the market to take more of a long position today, if I was overnight the market, I would have said, this is what it needs to do. Come down, hold into the minutes, rally, hold, close bullishly, and continue higher tomorrow. I would have bought the market today. I know this sounds crazy, but you could have bought the market today. It was an ad position for the market today. Just in this look here, okay? The people that are trying to short this market are guessing. They're simply guessing the top, which is not a professional way to trade. It's just not, okay? I wouldn't be short this market at all, like not even consider it at all. And the fact that people are so convinced that, that it is kind of going to come in and fall and drop actually helps give me conviction of the fact that it's going to continue higher because professionals would never read this market that way. Never, 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 never in a thousand million years. And I do consider myself a professional. I am a professional. I'm looking at the information. I am not so stuck on my bias that I don't double, triple check myself. I'm always doing that. I always know what it needs to do to, to stay in what it is in the formulation that I see it. And then if it does it, I say, yeah, there it is. There's the confirmation. Again, the confirmation today that the market's not coming in was the way that it reacted in the minutes, the drop down this morning, which failed to go lower and didn't go anywhere, it even broke yesterday's bar and didn't go anywhere, and the market closing bullish now in the next 10 minutes today, and probably opening neutral tomorrow and rally, or gap up tomorrow and rally. I would be surprised if the market gap down tomorrow, tomorrow, depending on where it would gap, I would still probably double, triple check to see if it really was anything to short or just go long in. So, or something else I was going to say next. Anyways, those are the two opposite ends of the spectrum that traders are reading this market of things they're doing. Then there's me, which says the market actually is a good buy. You don't wait till it pulls in for a buy. If you want to go long, you read the gaps and take the trade, and you should be long the market already if you want to go long it, or you could still go long it, and the market's higher, aggressively so. I'm going to repeat. In September, I said in the next four to six months, the market's going to continue to make a bullish move that's going to be bigger than anyone's expected. Then I saw after that certain numbers had hit. It's already hit some of those numbers. Then after that, I said the market is going to continue to run and be bullish the entire year of 2015 unless I see something that changes, that happens to change that in next year. I don't see that happening. I'm seeing the market's going to run all next year. That's what I'm seeing in advance. This is a prediction that I'm making. Based on reading the price action, I am very good at reading things live intraday, and I'm also very good at predicting things far in advance that have not even happened. Why? I have a sixth sense on how to read price, and I am read gaps well, and I'm seeing what people are attempting to do with this market, and I'm seeing what's really happening here with the real money that moves the market, that makes the market, which is buying the market right now, and is going to continue, okay? And the fact this is a new entry port to go long means it's not going to end or halt anytime soon, because that is not how institutions look to take positions in things. Look, this market is going to close at the bottom and tell today bullishly, just like I said seven hours ago. And this is a great call. I just can climb this market so well. 
So I, a lot of people, you know, been emailing me about the fact to say the market's going to come in. One, even if the market had closed right today, let's just say it had closed the way it was in the morning, it would have had no meaning. If the market had closed red today under the low from yesterday's bar, it wouldn't have had any meaning. The market still would have been higher. It, just one red bar does not mean you go in and short something. Okay? And I didn't read this gap today as bearish. I read it as neutral. Neutral. Okay? We closed on uh, Tuesday, 205.55. These are areas. And we opened today at 205.31. That's a neutral open. The market's going to close with a green body. Look at this. Seven minutes into the close. Here it goes. Look at this. Jeez. And the other day, now I called the market bu bullish yesterday, and it ran a power trend all day. Here, see this. The other day, in the morning here before the pre-market, I said, one of these days this week, the market's going to have a crazy, crazy, crazy big green bar. Now, we did power trend on Tuesday, and we did have a nice rally, and we did have a big move and a big bar and up to the next number, 206 or thereabouts. But, you know, I'm still seeing a massive green bar that is somewhere going to get going here, It that bar that I'm seeing hasn't really totally gone yet. <clears throat> and someone had emailed me that yesterday's bar, bar trading the power trend was a failed breakout. There's nothing failed about this. The market rallied all day and power trended up. You can count the red bars in the 15-minute chart in this market until the close. That's not a failure of anything. It's a it's a continuation follow through of a bullish market that's getting bought. There's no failed breakout. There's no failed anything. That's real. That's as real as the Manhattan skyline I'm sitting looking at right now. I'm out of my apartment in the George Washington Bridge. Real as all get out, along with the strength in this market. Look how close, strong this market's been close today. Look at this. Let's just see where it closes. <laughs> market's going to make an attempt to close over the high. High uh, on the minutes was 205.55. One of the things that experience has taught me, and this is something I don't know how to teach people. I'll probably figure out how to teach people this at some point, because usually what happens is I see something, I figure it out. Then I don't know exactly how I know how to do something. And then eventually I formulate it in a way that I can intellectualize it to people to teach in a class or speak it. But I do know what things need to do to set up what they need to do. And I see them. And I did that today in the short with the CLF. And I I saw this here the way the market needs to set up to continue higher too. And it did it down into the close. So I do know what things need to do to be correct. I do, don't know how I know that though. This is above and beyond the gap rating that I know to rate the gaps for the directional bias and the targets and the entries. This is something else which helps you make sure you see what you need to see before you take the setup. For example, like if I had wanted to go on the market today, I would have gone long in here. <clears throat> now, I didn't, but I'm saying if I had wanted to, or even the low in here at this reversal time right around lunch at 11 o'clock with the bounce, because <clears throat> I just knew we weren't going anywhere with that today. And I wouldn't be surprised if people shorted this market today, have a stop over the high of yesterday's bar, think that that's made a top, it doesn't play out, and the market rallies and falls through higher tomorrow. I won't know until I see the gap in the morning. I just will not know because I read the gap from the morning. And that's how I see what we're doing. And I don't know if we're going to gap up tonight or down tonight or neutral tonight. And I don't know where we're going to gap tomorrow. But I knew what way we needed to close today to follow through higher. And every transaction, every price action that has happened all in here the last two weeks, as challenging as it is for people to read, I understand it very clearly. I must say this is market is perfect. When I look at something and I say, oh, this is perfect. It's perfect. It seems like something that's hard to read or hard to trade, but as far as I'm concerned, in reference to the way this is playing out, it's absolute power of strength, a pillar of strength, and it's perfect in my mind, in my eyes, the way I'm reading it. And, you know, people aren't going to give up shorting it. And every time someone emails me that they think it's lower, it just helps strengthen my conviction that it's not. So it is almost 4 o'clock. Market's going to close very strong today. We'll see where it goes. Spy is bullish. I don't know where we're going to get tomorrow. We'll see. All the targets set out there are still in play. Everything looks good for this. And we'll see where we go. Into, well, next week's the holiday week. Yeah. Yeah, we could 
continue to rally into the holiday. We could just continue to rally into the holiday, actually. Rally, 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 rally. Tomorrow's Thursday. One week before Thanksgiving, not even that. Five days left before the holiday. Markets close Thanksgiving and a half day Black Friday, and no one should be trading that Friday afterwards. And next week is going to be as slow as beans. So the reality is that the market could just continue to rally here on low volume even next week. <laughs> This is Melissa with the StockSwish.com. If you'd like more information on the next Golden Gap class, it's this weekend, November 22nd and 23rd, where you can learn the rating system from me, learn how to take the entries, learn support and resistance, and how to read charts properly for directional bias. And if you learn gas from me, you would never short this market. I, there's no one in the room that's short this market, that trades with me every day, that hears what I say every single solitary day about this market, and then turns out to play out the way that I say it. There's no one that is questioning that at all, that has been with me now for any length of time or taking the class. So I think understanding gaps helps you in so many different things. Trading the market, trading things opposite the market, ETFs, reading gaps in stocks, doing stocks if you want to do options for the directional bias in something, swing trading, core trading, day trading. There's just so many different things you can do with the rating system that I created. I never created it for anything other than myself to day trade gaps. And now here I am. The system has so many uses and so many people are doing so many different things with it. And you can do different things with it. Why? Because it really, really reads power of money and stocks in the market. And that is a powerful, powerful thing. When people ask me about the cost of the class, I, I chuckle because the stuff that I teach in the class is invaluable because no one else is teaching it. It is so important to understand how to read a stock or the market. There is nothing more significant in any chart in existence in the U.S. stock market other than gaps to read price. It is a reason that I've called this market accurately and can see how things need to set up and trade and the directional bias for them and the entries and reading support and resistance right. And everyone I think that day trades needs to learn how to read gaps. And people that don't will continue to only buy into support and short resistance and see a 50-50 or less than that uh, basically profitability, which is not enough to pay yourself or make any real money. Look at that little bar that just happened there. I shouldn't say little. Look at that beautiful little... There, that was the close. Almost here, look. Look at that. Have a great day, everyone. Email me if you're interested in the class. Melissa at the stockswish.com. Have a great day.